Okay, welcome everybody. My name is Jeff Green, president of Green Team Realty. Thanks for joining us for the June 2020 housing market update. We're going to be joined by our power panel. I like to call them this week. That was a good term. Thank you, Laura Moritz, for that one. Let's get right into it here. We have a lot to talk about, a lot of things happening, as we all know, around the, the world and in many industries, but certainly the housing industry is um, fun to talk about right now. Things are really moving along here in the New York metro area, at least. So here's a look at our panel. We'll get to them in a little bit. Um, so here we go. The May gain, we're going to start out talking about jobs in particular and the overall economy, and then we'll come back around to the housing market in particular. So May, uh, the gain in jobs was the biggest one-month job surge in U.S. history since at least 1939. That is quite the stat. Um, but I don't think that's a major surprise to many of us. I think to some of us it was. This is also worth looking at, which is 70, over 75% of job losses were temporary layoffs and furloughs according to employers. This is as of the May report from the Fed. All right, so that, that's a good news. That's a good news thing, right? It means that still the, the unemployment rate, which is still very high, um, primarily is made up of temporary job losses. Um, Employers added 2.5 million jobs, blowing Wall Street expectations out of the water, uh, where economists had forecasted a loss of 8.3 million jobs. So what a swing over, you know, almost uh, a, an 11 million job swing when you take the variance between the two. Um, so that, you know, clearly shows, you know, how much the quote unquote experts really know, right? I mean, we always have to take everything with a grain of salt that we hear and, and realize that nobody holds the crystal ball. And what we need to do is we need to, you know, get good information and make our own uh, judgments based upon the facts that we're given. And that's what we try to do here every month with housing market updates, just provide information, give you our insight and let you make the decision. Housing will fare better than expected during the severe downturn. This is by Ivy Zellman, CEO of Zellman and Associates. I agree with that statement. We're going to, we're going to show why. Um, Home prices still projected to continue to appreciate through 2022. Uh, when you take a look at all the different, you know, uh, organizations that are making these projections, these are some pretty substantial, well-known organizations, uh, all of which are showing price appreciate, appreciation, excuse me, uh, through 2022. No one uh, is expecting things to go backwards over that three-year period. So that's good news. Um, mortgage demand. Uh, from home buyers showing unexpectedly strong and quick recovery, right? So this means things really snap back. This was from uh, Diana Olick on CNBC. And that is true. We have Laura Moritz here from Classic Mortgage who's going to comment on that. Um, pending sales are up. New listings taken are up. This is from Zillow's June report, all right? That's a good thing. That means that people are gaining confidence enough to be able to put their homes on the market. They're not as scared as they were, you know, two months ago about this pandemic that we're in, uh, so on and so forth. This is interesting. And what you're gonna see consistently in all of the reports is that probably the bottom of the V was April, okay? And look at the foot traffic, the decrease in foot traffic. Look what happened in April. People just stopped looking at homes. It was just largely because we couldn't, at least in our area. Um, the government just basically shut down our ability to show homes. So foot traffic really just, just fell off the shelf, so to speak. Um, I brought this chart in because I think it's important, uh, very important. If you look at the percentage of distressed property sales, okay, it's still at a very low number. You can see down here, uh, we're at the 4% uh, mark. I'm just going to get my pointer enabled here. Um, and then the projection... Uh, through the end of the year is even to continue to decrease, right, through uh, 3%. So that's a good stat. Um, we're holding firm on that number, and that's a, good, that's a good note because really what led the last downturn in 2008 uh, and really made that drag out for an eight-year period of time was the fact that there were so many distressed sales. Um, but I don't think we have it coming. This is also another fact, uh, some in interesting information that I think shows the long-term health of the housing market. It's just different investment options that people have. Would you prefer to invest in real estate, stocks, savings accounts, or gold? And you can see 
that there's a major variance between any of the others, stocks being number two, um, over a, you know, a, a 14 point differential real estate versus stock. So, you know, confidence is always extremely important in any marketplace, no matter what the asset is or, you know, whatever's being exchanged. Confidence has a lot to do with it. And you can see clearly people still believe in real estate as an investment. Um, mortgage rates. You can see here there's some projections through 2021, uh, Q1 of 2021 uh, by Freddie Mac. And uh, they're basically projected to stay low, 30-year fixed rate, which is key, right? Um, at the end of the day, it's about availability of money. And uh, that is going to drive pricing. And it looks like mortgage rates are going to stay low, despite all the turbulence that, um, that we had with different things. So now let's take a look at some actual stats. We're looking here at the national level. This is the United States as a whole. You can see this green line really sharply coming down here for April. Now, of course, we're in the June housing market update, but the national stats are always lagging 30 days. So we'll bring the May numbers to you in the July housing market update, so on and so forth. But yeah, you can see that this number really dropped off in April, significantly lower than any of the other uh, four years previously. So I fully expect this to snap back and to get back up into these levels um, by the time we get into June, July, August numbers. It's possible that we might even see one of the months jump above uh, the previous four years because uh, the market has just absolutely popped, which we're, we're going to check in with our power panel in a minute. Um, home prices continued to increase despite the decrease in traffic. And that is a result of simple supply and demand. There are just not enough homes for sale for the amount of people that want to buy them. So of course, that's gonna drive price up. Months of inventory, months of supply. Uh, we're showing a little bit of an uptick, but again, a normal-ish type market is usually at six months of inventory. We're still far below that, which means that truly it's a seller's market. Uh, lots of bidding wars taking place, lots of homes selling above asking price, so on and so forth. Now let's just drill down a little bit more local. You can see here now we have we do have the main numbers locally, and you can see the bounce back here in Orange County. Uh, the numbers came up off of April into May, um, and I expect that this curve is going to go even further because most of New York didn't get into the phase two part of it where we're actually able to show homes again until uh, last week. So um, and here we are with the average sales price. You can see it's just kind of hanging in there at a very high level, you know, and compared to uh, previous years. So I do not expect this green line to start really coming down below previous years simply because the supply and demand factor is just not enough supply of homes. Then we go back into Sussex County. You know, interesting. Sussex never really came down. You know, Sussex is on, Sussex is on a pretty normal trend here and kind of holding its own. Um, and I, I will say this, um, the governor Murphy and his administration has done a very nice job of at least with the real estate industry, keeping us moving. We never really saw a major setback in our ability to show real property like we did in New York state and still continue to have in New York state. There's some onerous restrictions still on us at this point in time, making it very difficult to operate, but New Jersey did a nice job of that. And look at that. You know, they kept on a normal path, normal-ish path. Average price still way up over the four previous years. I don't expect Sussex County to see a price decrease anytime soon. Uh, we're going to talk about what we see as a mass exodus happening from the New York metro area. Um, so let's just, some housekeeping things here. Join us for the next update. That's the, always the third Tuesday of the month at 2 p.m. That's July 21st. 2 p.m. and you can always stay in touch with us at greenteamrealty.com slash HMU as far as the housing market update goes. And thanks to really the business referral exchange for always sponsoring our housing market update. So without further ado, let's uh, go to our panel here and check in with our power panel. We'll start um, with, uh, we have Laura Moritz. You can just wave your hand there, Laura. Uh, hopefully. Hi got a gallery view going on here. I'll get the gallery view. Laura, you can wave your hand now. That's Laura Moritz. Carol Buchanan, we see you. Carol, just give us a wave. Pam Zakowski, Karen Gonin. All right, great. So, um, you know, we've been, Carol, I'll start with you. Um, we've been talking about this potential problem with this virus that's coming out of China since January. It came to our shores in a tsunami type of thing as far as government shutdowns and lockdowns 
things seem to be fleshing out as far as the virus goes and we're kind of stabilizing and we're learning a lot more about it. And there's major political debates as to what the death, death rate really is and how things are being calculated. But at the end of the day, real estate kept chugging along. Right. And I, I just was speaking with you earlier this week, Carol, and you're muted right now. Um, but you were saying that you've in your 30 plus years in the business, you've never seen it this intense. That was the word that you had for it. Is that true? Yes, that's absolutely true. It is intense. And people are just very determined to find a home in Orange County. And the frustrating part is that there's not enough homes on the market. So when a home is on the market and it's, it's a nice house, it's priced well, usually the agent will have multiple offers within a day or two. It's that intense right now. Right. Yeah. So just, you know, some quick advice to those who are out there looking for a home, you know, just a couple things. Number one, you know, align yourself with a good realtor, a local realtor who knows the territory, who can get things done so that you have your COVID-19 form done, you have your pre-approval lined up, all these things. You can't even get in to view a home unless you have all of this documentation ready to go. So it's really in your best interest to get a buyer agent who is going to you know, help you with all of the, you know, your needs to be able to get all these things ready to go so that you can pounce when the time comes. And I would also say, we can kind of talk about this, is just preparing to make offers. You know. Um, being prepared with with information. So what do people need to make an offer? Well, they need to, in my opinion, selling lots of homes to buyers. I always found that they need to understand the market, meaning the inventory that's available and pricing most importantly, so that they feel comfortable with the offer that they're presenting. A lot of that stuff can be done well in advance to you even finding the home that you're interested in. You can ask your agent for comparables for information pertaining to the market as a whole so that you can really get a feel for pricing so that when you do find the house that you like, you know exactly what it should be worth and what your offer should be. So Pam, down in Jersey, are you finding the same thing? I mean, I, I can't imagine it's any different just in Sussex County versus Orange. Is it, is it intense as Carol says it is? It is, it is. And it is because of the inventory. I have plenty of buyers looking that have been outbid some have won bids, but yeah, definitely a, there's a crunch down here. And if you don't get to see a home within the first couple of days that it's on the market, you're already behind the eight ball. It's almost you have to go out as soon as it me immediately comes on the market to e even get your foot in the door. Mm, yeah, that's interesting. Karen, you were saying that you're up at 530 in the morning. And you find yourself doing paperwork all the way through 11 o'clock at night right now because there's just so much going on. Right, there is. So the problem is I just don't have enough hours in the day. So I do my paperwork. It's 530 in the morning, whether it's doing my listings, putting up photos, printing up all the paperwork for all my showings. And then at night, that's when I do all the offers. I just don't have enough times in the day. And the issue is for us realtors is that we obviously want to get a good mortgage lender, someone that's going to get us a pre-approval ASAP. So it is our responsibility to make sure that our buyers are qualified before we take them out. Because if we don't and they see a home that they like, there's no way they're going to get it. Because just like Pam and Carol said, if you don't have it in hand and you're not ready to pull over and do it on the side of the road, you're not going to get a foot in the door at all. Yeah. So that's a good parlay to you, Laura Moritz. Uh, Laura Moritz from Classic Mortgage. Um, it's, I'm sure, just as crazy for you. I mean, just as we're in our practice mode here before the, uh, the webinar got going, you were saying that you've never seen a situation where you're pre-approving multiple people for the same listing. Yeah, I mean, I'm doing five, sometimes seven to 10 pre-approvals for the same listing. That but are for different people that are working with different agents, but that's it's like, that's how little the inventory is. And all the different buyers that are coming to you, that's it's all about that one particular listing, right? That's correct. And very yeah. often, um, I'm noticing that the offer that gets accepted is with uh, somebody who's using a local lender because the realtors, the listing agents are very, very skittish about using big box banks and using lenders that they're not familiar with from out of the area. It's just it's got to be done very effectively, efficiently, and uh, very quickly in order to keep up with the pace of the market. Yeah. So just from a general standpoint, Laura, I mean, how, 
how are things going? You know, a month or two ago, I think you were on with us talking about, you know, all of the, um, the forbearances that were hitting. And there was, there was a scare there for a little bit because we weren't sure the liquidity of the whole system was going to kind of fall apart. And the Fed kind of jumped in and eased that a little bit with, uh, you know, some influx of cash to kind of make things work. Has that subsided? Are, are we seeing a lot less forbearance, uh, a lot less people, you know, taking those, uh, those leaves on their mortgages? Where are we with that whole thing? Well, let's just keep in mind that the people who are calling me are not people who are looking for forbearance because they're re reaching out to their servicing lender. So that's not on who I'm communicating with on a regular basis. However, um, I do hear from a lot of my clients with regard to refinancing now. So a lot of them are reaching out to me to say, you know, I, I did consider putting in an application for forbearance, but when I saw that I was going to continue to get paid, I put it on hold or I curtailed it in 100%. Um, so I think that now people are feeling a lot calmer because it's, you know, it's obvious to people that life will go on after the pandemic. Um, and I think a lot less people are in that strict financial pinch that they were getting themselves into it, you know, earlier on in the spring. Yeah. But as far as, you know, underwriters being able to push files through, funding being able to be funded, all of that's working. System is, is full speed ahead as far as more, the mortgages go. Well, when I say full speed ahead, <clears throat> you know, consider going to the, um, the deli or after church on Sunday where the line is out the door. I mean, there's just, volume the amount right. of volume to know that you could get a 15-year fixed rate mortgage at 2.75 right now and a 30-year fixed rate mortgage at 3.125 it's crazy right. um, so i'm closing loans in 30 days um i know that there's a lot of lenders who the bottleneck they're not able to keep up but my underwriters are working seven days a week and they're putting in 16 hour days. There's somebody in the office at five in the morning and there's people there, believe it or not, at 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's up with the bottleneck. So the, the, they are going full steam ahead, but there are a lot of lenders who are just moving at a snail's pace because they just can't keep up with the volume. Yeah, right. Exactly. It's just a log jam. Um, one other thing that I see, so you start to think about, all right, well, where to ease to accommodate what people want in terms of being able to move and buy a house up in the country or something like that. And this inventory problem that we have, obviously you start to think about new construction, right? Because we just simply need more units. And what I see as a problem is the fact that the right to build process, just builders being able to get their lots approved and through the planning process has been gummed up by the fact that everything's shut down. You know, the government offices are shut down. They, they, the planning board meetings are happening on Zoom and I'm hearing that, you know, hackers are breaking in and writing bad things on screen share. And it's just like, it's a little bit of melee. So that's one thing that's an interesting dynamic with this with this whole process is that new construction is a little bit kind of tampered right now because we, we can't get the right to build process to move along quickly enough. And then I also wonder, I don't know that any of us on this panel can comment on this, but I also wonder how just getting materials is a problem. You know, I know that we're, my wife and I are trying to do some renovations on our home and we're, we're having a hard time finding, you know, five quarters thickness on wood and, and di just different things because there's, there's a log jam in the supply chains. So I wonder if builders are really able to rapidly build homes like they normally would. I think there's going to be some hang up there. So I think that there's some systemic problems that are going to really leave us in this pattern of low inventory for some time. I don't, I don't necessarily see a way out of that. Carol, you probably have the most new construction of any of us here. Do you agree with that? I mean, the builders are caught up in, in uh, supply chain issues right now. No, you're muted, Carol. Carol, you uh, have to unmute your mic. <laughs> Sorry about that. It looked like you had a very thoughtful uh, thing going on. So. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, from what I've seen locally, they seem to be doing okay. I uh, think uh, some of the builders, they have two, three houses going up at the same time. Right. But they seem to be doing all right with getting the materials that they need. Yeah, that's good news. That's good yeah. news. Yeah. 
Right. Okay. Um, well. One other thing, unless, does anybody else have any final comments to touch on? I just want to talk about just small business in general uh, a little bit and how that impacts our local communities and the housing market. Can we transition to that? Okay. So I don't know about you guys, but it breaks my heart to be driving around. You know, I, I recently bought a um, basketball hoop. My boys are really into basketball and we wanted an in-ground hoop and we bought it from Dick Sporting Goods online. And the only place that we could get it was up in Kingston, New York. And we didn't want to wait for delivery, which was like three weeks out. So we're like, you know what? We're going to make a day of it. We're going to drive 60 miles north up to Kingston. And we took the back roads up on the west side of the river and we took the back roads down on the east side of the river. And it was, you know, all these towns were shut down. I mean, we could barely find a Dairy Queen to get some ice cream on the way home. And it's still, there's still, you know, I, I got an, an email update from our Realtor Association yesterday saying that, you know, Governor Cuomo is threatening to shut businesses down because they're not, you know, adhering to all these guidelines and this, that, the other thing. I mean, to me, it's just, it's madness. I mean, shouldn't we open for business at this point? Does anybody agree with me on that? I agree totally. 150%. Right now I'm in Florida um, where I have a second home and I kind of got stuck down here during the beginning of the pandemic uh, and not really willing or able to fly back to New York um, until things settle down. And uh, we've got a different mentality here and all the businesses are open. Um, I'm getting my nails done, my hair done. Um, I'm going to get a massage, going out to So eat. lucky. Yeah, my <laughs> wife. my wife is envious right now. I know, I'm not trying to rub it in, but I can tell you that nobody is sick. And I'm reading these reports on a daily basis about all the extra spike in Florida since the business is open, and it's not true. I mean, I, we were out the other night and I said there was about 30 of us, and I said, does anybody at this table know anybody who knows somebody who's sick now, and not one of us did? So we would like to know where all this surge is, because no. And the businesses here are open and everybody's back to normal. So I agree. It's got to be really, really, really frustrating and hurtful for these small business owners, you know, terrible. 100%. For, I mean, go. for us, it's really go funny. Ahead. We, uh, I mean, we're allowed to do showings in New Jersey and we were never not allowed to show. So I have clients that are telling me, can we call our parents and have them meet us here so we can see them face to face? Cause that's allowed. So we're allowed to show houses, but you're not allowed to go into a store? Does that make any sense? Right. If you can go into a store, Home Depot, you doesn't take COVID, only the local hardware store you get COVID. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and, and you know, look, you know, it's- Well it's, said. It's a funny thing, but it's not funny for those who are in it. And my heart breaks for those yeah. entrepreneurs. I mean, I know, I know how much I have put into my business over the last 15 years and I've put my heart and my soul into it. And I know that all entrepreneurs do that. And for people to be shut down uh, without real, real meaning for it at this point is just, it's, it's, it's unconscionable. You know, it, it's like, get the businesses open, please just open these businesses. They need it. It's good for our local communities. I think I read somewhere, New York state has lost 450 million in sales tax. Wow. For what purpose? I know. It's crazy. The other thing that I never really didn't understand is um, how the liquor store was deemed an essential business. And, you know, I understand, like, we liked it open, but like, and I didn't understand why the big corporate big box stores, you couldn't get the virus in Walmart or in Home Depot, but you would get it if you went to your local, right. you know, drugstore. It just doesn't really make any sense at all. Yeah. And, you know, the next big thing that we all need to keep our eye on, and I think that, you know, for anybody who's watching this long into this housing market update, schools is the next big front, I think. We, we have to get schools open this fall. I mean, they're literally talking about not opening schools in the fall. And I'm starting to lose my mind over this because how do people go back to work if their kids can't go back to school? How are they going to do it? People right. can't commute. They can't. And not only that, those children need social interaction. 100%. Totally. 100%. So, you know, that, that's a real problem. And, you know, it may not affect, you know, we're here on the housing market update. And to me, everything's interconnected. You can't, you know, talk about one thing without the other. And, 
I see that as a real problem. They have got to get schools open this fall. Um, enough's enough, you know, so. Yeah. All right, well, any other final comments, questions, concerns by anybody? I actually just wanted to mention that's what's really important uh, when we are showing homes or, you know, so the other realtors that are watching or the sellers and buyers, please be respectful of what the sellers are asking you to do in homes. So if they're asking you to put a mask or to put gloves or not touch anything, please respect that. You never know who's in the home, if they have an autoimmune disease or yep. God forbid, something to that effect. Just because they're not there watching you doesn't mean that you don't have to do that. And to the other realtors that are watching this, please make sure you enforce that. It's not about you looking bad to your clients. It's about you doing the right thing. And that's really important, especially with COVID-19. That's a great point, Karen. Thanks for that. And um, so one last quick look. We're going to meet again with our power panel on July 21st at 2 p.m. And here is a look at our panelists' contact information so that if you wanted to get in touch with any of these Wonderful women, very successful and accomplished women, all of them, Laura Moritz, Karen Gonan, Pamela Zakowski, Carol Buchanan. Thank you all. And thanks everybody for watching the Housing Market Update. Have a good one.